Set in the town square of Verona, Italy in the 1590s, shows Phil Hartman as Count Paris and Jerry Stiller as Lord Capulet. Hartman. Lord Capulet, I seek your daughter Juliet's hand in marriage. Stiller. You know, Paris, I'm thinking of waiting a couple of years. See if she sprouts out a little bit more. See if I can get a bidding war going. But why don't you keep yourself hard by coming to our ball that we're having? She'll be there for you to salivate. Cuts to a bedroom. Gilda Radner is Juliet. Betty White is Lord Capulet. White. Juliet, honey? Radner. Yes, mother. White. Count Paris is going to be at our ball tonight. Why don't you wear this push-up bra? And be sure to wear those fuck-me heels. Radner. Mom, I'm like 12. White. Well, sweetheart, your father and I's retirement hinges on you getting bought by a suitor for a very high price. And besides, do you want to live in some ditch or instead have the same luxuries that you're used to? Lord Paris can provide that. Cuts to the streets of Verona. John Belushi is Romeo and Crystal Farley is Benevolio. Farley. What's up, young Montague? How's it hanging? Why the long face? Belushi. Ah, I'm sad. I got dumped by Mary Tyler Rosalina. Farley. That bitch. Whatever, man. Let's go get some ass at that Capulet Ball they're having. Belushi. Capulet Ball. But I'm a Montague. Farley. Who gives a shit? Ass is ass. We'll sneak in. Come on. It'll be fun. Cuts to the Capulet Ball. Shows Belushi walking with his head down, muttering about Mary Tyler Rosalina. Shows Radner briskly walking. As she turns a corner, she bumps into Belushi. As the two say sorry to each other and try to move out of each other's way, their feet get tangled together and they bump their heads and both trip over. Belushi gets up, offers his hand and says, Oh shit, are you okay? Radner takes Belushi's hand and says, Ha, yes, I'm fine. I can be such a klutz sometimes. Belushi, I'm Romeo. Radner, I'm Juliet. Charles Grodin, his tieball, approaches and says, What the hell are you doing here? You're a Montague. Grodin puts a knife to Belushi's throat. Stiller approaches and says, Hey, wait just a minute there. I don't want any bloodshed unless it's Juliet popping her cherry to the highest bidder. Just get rid of this guy. Cuts to Radner out on her balcony. Radner. Oh, Romeo. Oh, how magical it was to meet him. I've never felt so in love before. I promise to love him always, no matter what my parents say. Shows Belushi underneath the balcony, listening in. Belushi climbs scaffolding and enters the balcony. Radner. Oh, Romeo. My wish has come true. Belushi. I love you, Juliet. I've never felt such love before. Radner. Oh, I love you too, Romeo. The two kiss. Belushi. Want to go bang? Radner. You bet your ass. But there's just one thing. Live from Tom's phone, we're not alive. It's Saturday Night Live, starring... An ever-evolving cast then is unionized and refuses to allow their names to be mentioned until their demands are met. Musical guest, Freddie Mercury, and your host, William Shakespeare. Ladies and gentlemen, William Shakespeare. Applause, applause, applause. Shakespeare. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm happy to host, after having had a stint as a writer on the show. Somehow I, William Shakespeare, was never able to get a sketch on air. 
Anyway, the situation of me leaving reminded me of a soliloquy I once wrote. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die to sleep no more. And by asleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Ay, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come. Nor McDonald comes out. McDonald, uh, Billy, did you just say what dreams may come? Shakespeare, indeed I did. McDonald. So... Do you mean like a wet dream where you splooge all over your sheets? Shakespeare. I beg your pardon. McDonald. Oh, never mind. Shakespeare. Where was I? Oh, yes. When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. Crystal Farley comes out. Farley. Billy! Shakespeare! Yes, what is it, Crystal? Farley! You're gonna have to start talking a hell of a lot dumber! I don't know what the hell you're saying! Shakespeare! Well, I'll summarize then. I was trying to say that sometimes death seems attractive to those living. Although the alternative may be even worse. So what's the answer now that I'm dead? Well, I've found that if you've appreciated life, you'll love the afterlife. If you hated what life has to offer, you're not going to like it any better when Crystal Farley yells at you to talk dumber. So appreciate what you have now. It's a good habit to have for whatever comes your way. We have a great show tonight. Freddie Mercury is here. So yes, we are the champions, my friends. We'll be right back. 